Let's talk about charter schools. Sure. Um, what is your take on charter schools and the role that they play in uh, reforming and improving education in a way that impacts all students versus just a few? So rather than talking about charters as a body, I like to talk about the practices and outcomes associated with charters. And to the extent that a particular charter engages in these practices, I am either for or against it. Uh, and so when we looked at academic growth of students in charter schools, for example, we found that although a charter might look like they're comparable in terms of overall test scores, when we look at where students started, and then look at how much they grew, they pale in comparison to public schools. So there's less academic growth in Chicago's charter schools. We looked at a test called the MAP test, a measure of academic progress that actually measures student growth from one year to the next. The charters averaged the 48th percentile in student growth and our neighborhood schools were at the 75th. This was in 2014. So that's problematic. So to the extent that you have a system like that, and it's for black and brown children, that means you're sending the kids who need the most growth because they're already behind, and you're sending them into the schools that produce the least growth, least growth while you have uh, white and Asian students and well-off students who typically, um, who are already at the top, who are still in the public system that's producing the most growth. The most growth. So what's going to happen there if black and brown students are in the charters with the least growth? That, that gap grows, right? And that's exactly what happens. So look at the national data. What city was ground zero for school choice? Milwaukee, right? The, the, the vouchers and the charters. What is it, 30 years ago, right? And so if in Milwaukee and Wisconsin in general, uh, that gap closed, then we can say, oh, the charters did what they were supposed to do. If it increased, there's a problem. Well, guess what state now has the largest achievement gap in the nation? Wisconsin. And so we see one, less student growth. We see two, associated with charters, an exacerbation of the academic achievement gap. That's problematic. So to the extent that you associate it with the things that create that, I can't support it. Number three, we see an abuse of the expulsion and suspension process. In Chicago, there is a charter whose expulsion rate is 251 times the district average. Not 251%, 251 times. To the extent that you abuse the expulsion process to get rid of students you don't want, I cannot support you. Uh, fourth, there is hypersegregation associated with charters. So typically charters will have poor kids and the public schools will have the poorest kids. And so the charters are able to say, well, we have low income kids. We have kids who qualify for free and reduced lunch. What you find when you look in the data is they have most of the kids who qualify for reduced price lunch. And the public schools have most of the kids who qualify for free lunch, which means their incomes are averaging at the charters about $25,000 per family. And at the public schools, their incomes are averaging $5,000. And so you know where the students with the most need are who will likely have suffered the impact of having lived in such poverty. They're in our public system. And so, and then now you're segregating them with this lottery enrollment process from the kids they need to be around who are maybe in impoverished conditions, but have not suffered as much right. as they have. Or their families examples. have more engagement right. in the process to even so, enter the charter. Exactly, so to the extent that a charter does not get academic growth, to the extent that a charter exacerbates the achievement gap, to the extent that a charter exacerbates segregation, right now it's not only racial segregation, now it's income segregation within the same race, to the extent that they abuse the expulsion system, I cannot support them. That said, most charters engage in those things. There's some that don't. To the extent that you don't, you know, more power to you. To the extent that you do, you have to be stopped. So what do you say to the families who would say, you know, as a black man, you should not be stopping me from exercising choice of where my student goes to, that black family is... I think they're absolutely right. Uh, I shouldn't be stopping you from exercising choice. My point is that government should not be subsidizing poor options. Right? Government money should not be spent subsidizing a system that produces 
poor results. You know, they can go off and start their own thing. You know, and if you want to choose to go and spend your money at that thing, at that inferior option, go ahead. But government should not be subsidizing it. Thank you. That's a good note to end on. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for having me. Absolutely.